In this video, we're going to focus on creating a scatter chart where we have a lot of items. As you can see here, we create an overlay. We'll make sure that we have these dotted lines, a circle around the point here, and of course, showing the values on the X and Y scale. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's start to look how to create hover lines to highlight the data point. So first of all, make sure you get the boiler template. So you can find this here on chartgs3.com. Uh, getting started this link you can find it all in the description box once you're on here copy this chunk of code and you're good to go next if you want to get the source code of this video and many others check out my patreon page and of course join the discord channel all the links are in the description box so first things here is to convert it into a simple scatter chart so what i'm going to say here scatter then what i want to do here is just change these values here so what I'm going to do here is, let's say here, X will be, let's say three, and Y will be three as well, comma, and just copy this, I will put in two more data points, six, nine, we can say here nine and six, save, refresh, there we are, that's quite decent, we can probably play around with it by having a min and um, I guess to show you the full values here, min equals zero, max equals 10, and then of course the same here. Save, refresh, oh, do we have a comma? Make sure we have a comma here, save, there we are. So now you can see it's within this framework here. All right, what I want to do here now is to create these lines and then circle, make, make a circle around it and then go down as well. So to do this, I'm going to create a custom plugin. I'm going to say plugins. And then in the plugins here, I'm going to say your hover line. I guess that's more than sufficient. And I'm going to say here plugin block constant hover line ID. And then we're going to say here, after, uh, when are we going to draw this after the data set? So after data sets, draw chart arcs chart arcs and plugins then what i want to do here is an object destructuring and i'm going to use here after because i want to highlight this because later on we will make one for the before it creates like a gradient item on top of it so anyway don't worry about it i will explain later on so i'm going to say here um a constant this is the object destructuring chart and i'm going to say here ctx tooltip you can get even the data and the chart area and what i want from the chart area is the left right top bottom width height and then here we're going to say skills x and y so once we have this what i want to do now is First of all, we need to make sure that we can see if we're hovering on top of a data point. So I'm going to say console log, and I'm going to show you why we have the tooltip here. Tooltip, and I'm going to say here, let's save that one, or well, to be specific, it will be underscore active. So if I save that, refresh, open up the developer tab, right now there's no active item until I click on this. Then you can see it's active, and then you see here, there's none again. So if I scroll up, you will see here what are we on. Specifically here, the data set index. If you have more than one data set, it will indicate here data set one or zero. And here, the data point. In this case, we hover on the yellow one, if I'm not mistaken, and that is the index of the data point of number two. That's two, one, zero. All right. And of course, we'll get the X and Y coordinates. So this information is for us crucial because now we can start to work on it. So what I'm going to do here, make a very simple if statement that if active.length is bigger than zero, in that case, I want to say this console active. As you can see here, if I hover over it, it will only show. And if I go away, it will hide. So what I can do now is start working on it. And what I need is basically the X and Y coordinates. So how do I get those? Let's look at it. If you're going to index zero, element, and then we have X and Y. So I'm going to say here, active, 
make sure it's the index zero dot element dot x and what I'm going to do is cut this I'm going to say a constant x core equals this and I'm going to say a constant y core equals this y so now I have all of this information what I want to do next is start working on drawing the line and I'm going to draw a line here to there and from top to bottom so let's start to work on that so I'm going to say here ctx dot begin path to say I want to create a shape that is or a line independent of anything else. And then what I want to do here is say CTX at stroke style to give it a proper color. And in this case, the color will be black. Then what I want to do here is CTX dot uh, line width, the thickness of the line, three pixels should be sufficient. And now we can start to work on the coordinates. So I'm going to say CTX dot move to and this will be our starting point, which is X and Y. So what is our starting point? In my case, the starting point was, will be, if I'm moving one of these points, the starting point will be somewhere here, and then the height will depend on whatever the point we're moving on. Since this is the left side, that's very easy, so I can grab here this left. We know the X is left, and the Y, the height, will be the Y coordinate. So then I'm going to say ctx.line2 to create the connecting line. So the connecting line will be, of course, from the x coordinate, and then we're going to the y coordinate. Very straightforward. So now let me give you a visual. I'm going to say ctx. Um, uh, stroke to draw the line. Save, refresh, hover. There we are. It will know exactly, but if you look very carefully, it's just hitting, it's touching the point and I want to have some space around it. So what I'm going to do here is give it additional space. So for the X coordinate here, I want to deduct maybe six pixels. And if I do that, you can see here it is decent, maybe nine pixels is better. There we are. So we have enough space here. So now we know that one here, this works. What I want to do is this move outside of the begin path because I want all of these items to have the same color. So what I'm going to do now is create another shape and then it will go from here all the way down. So to do that, I need to start of course at the X and Y coordinate. But the Y coordinate must go down here and I'm going to give you later on a visual for that. So let's say here, we'll maintain this and we go here to this bottom area of the chart area, which we also have already calculated, it's this one. If I save this right now, refresh, you can see here now, I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but the line touches there. So what I need to do here is on the Y coordinate, I need to say an additional nine pixels, so it will go deeper down or further down. And as you can see here now, we have this working. So what I want to do now is create this nice circular shape around it. To do this, we're going to create another shape. And then before I even do that, I want to make sure we have dotted lines. So I'm going to say here, ctx dot set line dash. And this will be an array, six pixels solid, and then maybe three pixels white space. Save that, refresh, there we are. But as I do this, you might see everywhere else get somehow some dotted line. So I need to make sure we go to remove it once we're done. I only want to do it on the straight lines. So I'm going to say here, set line dash, but then we just remove all the values. So it will set back to original default state, which is none. Very important. So now we have this here. How do we draw the shape or the circle shape? So I'm going to CTX that arc. And then we're going to get here the x coordinate, the y coordinate, the radius. And then we're going to say here the angle start, angle end, and then counter flow, yes or no. So in this case, this will be false. We have no counter flow. X and y coordinates we already get. That's this one here, basically. The radius is basically where, how far away from the center or from the circle starting point will we draw this circle that's in this case nine so what i can do here radius what i will do i'm just going to say a constant radius equals nine grab this 
put it in here, and in there. Then the angle start. I'm going to make this zero because it will be zero degrees. Basically, it is the angle multiplied by zero. But I will make it zero, and then we're going to make sure that this here. I'm going to say angle multiplied by 360 because a circle is 360. However, this angle has not been defined yet. So what I'm going to do here, constant, I'm going to say angle, and then we're going to use math.pi divided by 180 degrees. Why are we doing this? Because the angle or 1 pi is a half circle, 2 pi is 360. So I want just the single degree or the radiant where we can just play around with it. In this case, angle multiplied by zero is always zero. So I can just keep it short like that. So once I did that, I'm going to say ctx dot stroke to draw this and save, refresh, and let's see what we get. There we are, and now we get this nice line. Absolutely phenomenal. So the next thing, in the next video, we're going to create an overlay at the back.